and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today guys for El Clasico because once again the biggest game in football is heading stateside in pre-season live from Las Vegas and this is a game right here that could well be the debut of Robert Lewandowski in a Barcelona shirt. We all cannot wait for that. And I'm sure as well today, we are going to find some time to talk transfers as the latest dramatic twist in favour of Barca appears to be happening as we speak. So let's get to it. Because indeed, Barca will meet Real Madrid in El Clasico live from Vegas in front of a sold out crowd on Saturday night local time. And this, of course, will be the first time ever that Vegas will host the Clasico. And tonight we are going all in. And I just want to say, guys, and make it absolutely clear that yes, this may be pre-season. This is a pre-season friendly, but this still matters. This is still a Classico. And it doesn't matter when we play Real Madrid. It doesn't matter when we come face to face with Los Blancos. We want to win. It's as simple as that. Whether we're down the park on a Saturday, whether there it's a five-a-side game indoors, if we're playing Real Madrid, we want to come out on top. It is really that simple. And especially here ahead of the new season, given the progress that Barca feel they've made throughout the summer here, we want to lay a psychological blow. We want to make sure here that we come out on top, put a marker down and just show Real Madrid. OK, we lost out last season. We know that they came out on top. But this time around, this season, we are ready to hit back. Now, one thing that I do have to note before we start talking about the possible lineups, about the players that we could see in this game is that this is for Real Madrid, their very first pre-season match of the summer. Now, for Barca, it's going to be our third. So we are a little bit further along in our preparations. You would expect Barca there to be maybe a bit more sharp given the preparations that we've already done. And what I would say about that is, as we continue here to move through pre-season now, Xavi, of course, really vital to have him in America now for the tour. As time goes on, it's going to be less about, I feel, giving everybody a run out, making sure that we improve our fitness and our sharpness, and actually more about, okay, what's our best team? What works best now with the players that we have, who's performing well, who deserves to stay in our team? And as these matches go on, we're going to have a better and better idea of who is really going to be in that strongest team, who is in Xavi's plans, and this is another game right here that may well be significant. Because as we do indeed now move onto the lineups and indeed the players that should be pushing their way into the starting lineup of Xavi, let's look here at the first half team from the match there, the brilliant performance against Inter Miami. Now, how many of these players from that first half do you think, OK, they did enough? to really stamp their authority on the team and actually say, OK, I deserve to stay there. Now, I want to point out in particular the likes of Franck Kessier, who's actually here come into this team and is already showing what he can do. Rafinha, of course, had a magnificent first half performance, two assists and a goal in that game. You know, he couldn't have done any more. But then you look as well to somebody like Aubameyang. He's, of course, got Robert Lewandowski breathing down his neck now at Barca, but he's also started pre-season. Two games, two goals for Aubameyang and Sufati, a really important goal for him. And I would also look as well to Alejandro Balde, to Nico Gonzalez. Those are two really young players there who I feel were fantastic against Inter Miami. They've really shown so far in pre-season their hunger to prove to Xavi their worth. And I think they've really, really done themselves no harm. And I think then when you bring in the second half lineup and you actually compare the two there, I think the really interesting question is going to come at centre-back because I would like to see in this game here Andreas Christensen alongside Araujo. I think those two could be a very, very solid partnership indeed. I would expect Des to continue there at right-back without question. Gavi, of course, is going to be pushing as well. Frankie de Jong, we don't know what the future holds for him. You know, he's deployed at centre-back in that second half against into Miami. Surely that's not going to happen again in a Clasico. Pablo Torre has shown his quality. You've got Jordi Alba, of course, who will be 
looking to get into that all important lineup. And then Memphis. What a goal he scored against Inter Miami. Dembele came on, had a brilliant cameo appearance as well with a goal. And you can just see already the strength that Barca are having here. The competition for places. That was something that Xavi really focused hard on this summer. He wants not only quality players, but in every position, competition, pushing each other, working hard to stay in the team. And it's going to be really exciting to see who plays in this Classico. But of course, guys, make no mistake about it. The man that we're all looking forward to seeing, the man who this stage has been set for, it is Robert Lewandowski. The transfer, of course, that took place several days ago. Since that time, we have all been on a high. We have all been counting down the minutes before we see him in a Barcelona shirt. And just imagine here making that debut in a Clasico. Yes, I know it's pre-season, but this is still an occasion. This is still a great moment to come into the team and imagine scoring in this game. Imagine an instant impact from Lewandowski. That would be absolutely stunning, and I cannot wait. Honestly, guys, it is going to be unbelievable to see him, surreal even, in a Barcelona shirt. And I just hope that in this game, we see a continuation of what we saw against Inter Miami. Obviously, it's going to be a step up in quality in terms of the opposition. I expect Ray Amadou to be up for this one. They're going to be motivated. It is going to be a close encounter, I'm sure. But it's important for Barca here to really be confident, to show what we can do, to know what we have, and approach this game here with real hunger, real ambition to show the world what we can do. All summer long, we've been building, we've been planning, we've been moving forward as a club. This is a Classico and we, we want to come out on top. Now I've got to say guys, the match review coming for you after this game probably will be a little bit delayed, you know, after this one. It's a 4am start here, over here in the UK. If you are going to the game though, what a game it should be. I really hope you have a fantastic time. I know many of you have managed to get tickets for this one and they are very hot property indeed. So really, really do enjoy it. I will see you probably a few hours after the game is over. I'm going to be dissecting it all and we are going to be talking about it here. Hopefully it will be a brilliant Classico. I'm sure there'll be goals. I'm sure it will be entertaining. This fixture very rarely lets you down and let's hope. It's a special one, but if we do as well here, just talk about some of the transfer latest, because in yesterday's video, everything changes, everything, day upon day upon day, minute upon minute, there's so many twists and turns this summer. We all thought Kunde was off the table. We all thought that deal, it was done, but no, he may not in the end go to Chelsea. He may not be moving further away from Barca, because again, we're in a situation here when we may hijack this deal. There are reports here coming out of the Catalan media that basically said Barca were waiting for Chelsea to not only lodge that bid with Sevilla, but to actually wait until the media leaked the bid to understand what that offer was. And then Barca, whilst they waited and waited and waited and everybody thought, okay, they're gonna back out of the deal, we were just considering what then we we're going to approach Sevilla with. Our offer is not expected to be the same level as Chelsea's. That's going to be interesting there to see what Sevilla make of that. But all this time, as we have said before, Kunde has been waiting to see what Barca offer him. I don't expect us to match the wages of Chelsea. That is something the club will simply not do, as we said yesterday. But... Could he be another player who makes a really big step towards Barca, who makes a really big commitment to come and play here? He's spoken with Xavi. He's been convinced of the project. And is he going to be another dramatic turn, dramatic twists? And is Kunde actually going to be on his way to Barca? Honestly, guys, let's see. So that right there, guys, is some important build-up ahead of El Clasico. And also there, just a quick round-up on what is happening with Jules Kunde. There should be a really exciting game to come. And hopefully, we may have another exciting signing in the bag wrapped up soon. We are going to have to wait and see what happens. Do not count your chickens yet. This is certainly not going to be done until it's 100% signed. So many things can still change. But let's hope for the best and let's stay positive here again today. We can do this. We are Barca. And I will see you very, very soon indeed. Thanks for watching, getting involved and indeed for tuning in here. Enjoy the Classico. But until next time, as always, 
Vyška! Help us!